Well, we can begin with the first case study session. Our first case study session is setting up Daimler manufacturing facility in India. And uh, the case study is going to be presented by Parthasarthi Thota, who is the Chief Financial Officer of Daimler India Commercial Vehicles Private Limited. Prior to this, he was a program manager for medium duty truck platform at DICV. Uh, Parthasarthi Thota is a B electronics graduate from NIT Surat, India, and MBA finance from USA. He began his career as a design engineer and following his MBA held several positions in France, strategy and product management in USA. And recently in India, he, his career experience spans across technology and automotive industries. He has been with Daimler for past 12 years in various management responsibilities. And it was pleasure for us to have this session, uh, have this case study from him. I would now request Partha Sati to please come on the stage and share us about the case study. Uh, thank you again uh, for uh, giving us this opportunity to talk to you a little bit about uh, Daimler. Uh, Ravi, one of my close friends from college days, uh, called me up one of, about uh, maybe seven, eight months back and said uh, it would be great if uh, we could share uh, some of our Daimler experiences with uh, the budding program managers and the Project Management Institute in general. So I thought it was a good time to do it because um, we had a short journey of from 2008 till 2012, which was the project management phase. And now we are uh, trying to sort of get into the series as a company, running company. And the idea of this a little uh, talk from my side to you is two prone. One is the fact that you see me, the title is CFO. The other side of it you see is I was a program manager for the light and medium duty trucks roughly about $400 million project for the last five years uh, running the project in India as we started off. I don't know how many of, of you really know Daimler. Can you please raise your hand? How many of you really know Daimler? Quite a few, surprising and appreciated. I think most of uh, the Indian community, the uh, population worldwide knows us as uh, Mercedes-Benz or Benz. That is just uh, one aspect of Daimler. And uh, when we came to India, we started off with the word Daimler because that is more closely associated with the trucks from where I belong. Today, uh, I have kind of uh, spread my talk. I'm not going to go through all the slides, but uh, essentially we have six chapters. And the focus which I've been asked to uh, emphasize on is why did Daimler become successful so far? Five years we've set up, we spent more than 3,000 crores, and we are on, on our way to spend more. And what has been the success factor? I wouldn't say the magic potion. I don't think we have anything called magic potion. As most of you program managers probably know, it is hard work, it's toil, it's sometimes luck, but mostly planning, execution, and ruthless tracking. So I'll go through, uh, for those of you who don't know much about Daimler, I would like to quickly introduce the company. Daimler produces everything which moves. The company came into existence 150 years back when the first engine was designed, and then the first automobile, and then the first truck, the first bus. So everything which is an automobile, which is first, comes from Daimler, what you might also know as Mercedes-Benz. So having a heritage like that and starting off in India just now might be interesting. But I think we have been in India a long time, uh, but not as ourselves, but through partnerships. Overall, Daimler being a varied product portfolio, trucking is what I represent, and trucking is what we are going to talk about today. And our single vision is trucks for the world. We want to be everywhere and anywhere where goods are moved, people are moving, mobility is a requirement, and Daimler will be there. And soon enough, the African countries will follow. I think we are um, in the emerging market uh, space, and India is right now in the epicenter of all our activity. It's the gravity which drives Daimler trucks worldwide. To give you some numbers, we are about $118 billion company with a net profit of about $8 billion. 
uh, positive cash flow, but uh, the key is that we are pretty big. And there comes sometimes the chances and sometimes the risk. Big companies have a big problem. That's called inertia. And when we bring inertia, momentum is hard to get. And as Daimler, when we came to India, one of the key pro issues we had in, uh, within our organization was can Daimler do it in India? I think the people outside were also asking the same. Can a company this big in size, this large, a mammoth, can it move nimble, can it move flexible to cater to the strong demands of the Indian customers, to cater to the aggressive usage of trucks in India, to cater to the very tough price point in India and still be profitable? I don't think I have the answer for the last one yet, but in a, in a couple of years I'll be probably there saying yes. So what is it? As Daimler, we are present in all the triads. I think the BRICS is a term used, uh, but we are pretty much there in BRICS. We are definitely there in all the dominant Western hemispheres. We are in the markets, we're everywhere, and pretty much dominate the markets and segments we are. This is the data a little bit about Daimler, uh, 2012 data. If you accumulate all the trucks above the six-ton GBW, we continue to be in the number one, number two position. We want to be there. We, be we believe that space belongs to us. And we'll do everything that takes to make sure we are there. India is an in integral part of it. And for us, Indian entry started in the 1950s when we made the first uh, partnership, uh, loosely worded word partnership, but essentially collaborated with Tata. And I think most of you know when Tata talks about trucks, they're talking about the Benz trucks, Tata Benz. So we had a great run with Tata for a long time. Uh, excellent partners, technology collaboration, and working with them. That was not just one of them. In fact, if you see the tempo travelers across the country, people who are being shuffled, that comes from the Daimler portfolio. Of course, not to mention, we also have the cars which introduced in 1990. And then comes the trucks. So the 2000, the era is for the trucks. Trucks and buses, buses and trucks for India, buses and trucks made in India, for India, buses and trucks made by Indians for the Indian market, and that is what we would like to achieve. Thank you. So why are we in India? Nothing new, but I think it's an interesting perspective on this chart. We try to position what we call is population to trucks ratio. This ratio is interestingly pretty constant around the world. If you look at it overall, I don't know if you can see, most of the countries and the GDP and the population pretty much falls on this line. And what is interesting is that this is the space we play with, this is the place we know, and this is where China is. And interestingly, India is just about to start. From a commercial vehicle industry, India is just at the forefront of an explosion. And we believe in the coming decades, quickly it'll come that the population will demand products, the population will demand services, the population will demand goods movement, inevitably, which will lead us to a point, something like where China has already reached today. So what is our role? I think you know the major players in the commercial vehicle industry are already, actually they're dominated by three. Tata, Ashok Leyland, and Aisha. There are several other players who are trying to nibble and eat at market shares. So what value does Daimler bring? There's Volvo, there's Scania, there are several players that go through it. For us, we believe we are here, not because we just want to sell a product. We are here, in the growth of India, in the growth of the trucking industry, and we want to be the transforming agents of the trucking industry. Just to give you a brief idea, when I grew up as a kid, I saw a truck, I had a perception, I knew what a truck was, I, it was called a lorry those days. After about 20, 15 years in the US, having worked there, when I came back, I still saw the exact same truck looking exactly the same with the exact same doors hanging and 
bucket at the bottom of your fuel tank, and so on and so forth. The transformation in India in trucking has not happened. We are living in the past. And we believe in Daimler that it is our responsibility to bring this transformation to India where roads are better utilized because the trucks are designed for the proper roads, where drivers are driving better trucks and they have better comfort. It is not a job hated. It is a job which they would like to have it, where businesses would love to have trucks because we have a proposition. We have a proposition where they clearly make better business sense for them, more money for them, and in turn, we would also make a little bit of profit. This transformation, we look at it, what we see is moving from a traditional segment into the modern segment is what we aspire for, and this is the dream, this is the vision we have, that in this process of moving from the traditional to the traditional market will go down, and as we move up into the modern segment, we want to be there in the front line. It is not just participating, it's not just being one of the players, we clearly want to be number one in front of everyone, leading technology, leading the transformation, and making India a better place to be, and seen as one of the best one of the most advanced technologies in the trucking world comparable to anybody in the West. But then the reality strikes. Hopes, aspirations, vision, 3,000 crores, and the market just doesn't come as we anticipate. This is kind of the market growth which was expected in our business plan, by the way. These are for real numbers. Based on this kind of a growth, everybody has a crystal ball. We also had one, and we all know that crystal balls really don't work half the time or more than half the time. What is interesting is that when the crystal ball doesn't work, what does leadership do? What does an organization do? What does project management do to face the tsunami which comes, to face the downturn which comes, to face the recession which comes, and still march on the path which was destined for us which we believe is the only vision which we should believe in. This is the downturn, and now we believe it will take a while. In fact, this line, I think, is too optimistic. We believe the market might be a little more delayed and then picks up. The aspirations of the Modi government are clearly, from a business standpoint, very positive, but they have not transcended into any business. Maybe it's too soon, but one thing is clear. The government has to do something very soon, very fast, if this country has to be on the marching path like other BRIC nations, mostly China. I don't know if you realize that in India, we need to generate 13 million jobs every year to keep your unemployment rate below double digit. Assume 9%, right? 13 million jobs need to be created and with a GDP of 4.6 and 5.9, this is just impossible. So we still believe that there are hiccups on the way, but India is still the place to be. I talked about several players who came before, and what is the story? So the juggernauts of Indian trucking industry, Tata, Ashok Leyland in the 50s, 60s, 70s, IHA. By the way, IHA also sells their medium-duty trucks, which are from uh, the Daimler platform called the Fuso brand, yeah, Mitsubishi Fuso, I think you would re realize that. And then came several players during the course with the same dream like we have, that this is the place to be, this is the place to make money, this is the place to do something. Half of them probably are now on the way out. Why? Don't know. Business model? Don't know. Is it leadership? Don't know. Is it a company's commitment to India? Don't know. What we do know is that when all others leave, there'll be one company standing. That'll be Daimler. When we come, we come it. We don't look back. And we'll be here, and I hope that we can see in the long run and be a major player in, the, in India. So the key of uh, this little talk with you today is to say, what did Daimler do which was unique? What would Daimler do which was planned? And what were the, some of the pillars of success that as Daimler DICV, as part of the management, um, you could call it either we achieved or we were lucky 
I think luck always has a part to play, but it only plays at the end. Luck only supports somebody who is actually striving and never looking back. But my job is now today to go through these two uh, slides, uh, these two points, setups uh, and achievements, and kind of give you a perspective of why Daimler as a project has succeeded. I think this is Project Management Institute's national conference. It is apt that we show you as Daimler what we did in project management. First and foremost, like any MNC, we believed that without a partner, we cannot do anything in this country because we are new to this, or at least as Daimler management, I'm not new, I am from India, so I'm fine with it. But as management, we don't have insight into the Indian way of business. We don't have insight into the Indian connections with the, with the governments or so and so forth. We don't understand the Indian customers so much, so we need a partner. Well, that lasted one year. Why? Because when we entered in 2008, it was the Great Recession worldwide, right? And our partner at that point realized that cash commitment was one which was becoming very difficult. So in 2009, we amicably decided to part our ways, and Daimler, true to its commitment, chipped in 100% of equity to say, we'll go do it alone. So partnership moved to Greenfield, and Greenfield moved to 100% Daimler subsidiary. So today, we in India, Daimler, is 100% subsidiary of Daimler, doing it all by ourselves with the Indian employees, with the people here, with the technology here, nothing much coming from anywhere else. Our four pillars of success, the vision we have, is first, access the Indian market, be a big player in India. Number two, uh, become the export hub. I have a very interesting uh, discussion with one of the export uh, agencies of the government just about six months back, just before Modi got, uh, just after Modi got elected. The conversation was around how can Daimler benefit from the export agencies to export trucks to the rest of the world from India. And it was interesting because that, that's not how we looked at ever. We never looked at how can we export, of course it was part of the business plan to export, but our vision was something else. What we were looking at to collaborate with the government was how can we sell brand India? We were not interested as a first step to make just money. For us, it was important that if we collaborate with the government, we would want to be with them because we want to sell India to the rest of the world. Our brand has Bharat Benz. We are Bharat Benz. We don't use Mercedes. We don't use uh, Western Star. We don't use any other trucks. We are Bharat Benz. Indian Benz is the truck. And I think all of you should know that this pride is essential. This pride is essential for every Indian to believe that quality trucks can be made on this land, in this country, no matter which state you are in. And if, in, if Indian government was interested to partner with us to sell brand India, we were interested in joining hands with them. Exports we can do. We don't need anybody. We are present in 170 countries. Not an issue. Not an issue. No matter which country you go, Congo, Morocco, Mozambique, uh, Mauritius, we have our dealer network, we have our salespeople, they can take our trucks and sell. What we are interested in is making our presence in India a value-added proposition for the country and sell Bharat Benz. Sell made in India. Don't look at it's coming from India. Quality has nothing to do with where it comes from. Quality can be achieved in India, was one of the propositions we were trying to get. And hence, export is a key step for us, and uh, we are looking forward to see how we can facilitate this uh, vision. Third, sourcing. Uh, sourcing parts, auto components for Daimler family worldwide, and fourth, setting up excellent centers. I think it's nothing new. A um, lot of companies have done it in the past. In fact, we are probably late to the game. Uh, this is where the mammoth moves slow uh, probably comes true. So we are uh, not just manufacturing trucks here. We are also becoming the engineering design center for Daimler. 
both in Bangalore and in Chennai. Uh, we expect to have, as of today, I think we have close to uh, 4,000 employees. Uh, in the next three, four years, it will probably double. And the purpose is that it is very clear the competency among our Indian engineers is superb. The ability to work under tight deadlines, the ability to, to commit and deliver is excellent. Nobody talks about leaving at 5 p.m. because it's family time. Good and bad, I think family time is very important. I think we have to balance. India has not struck that balance. Um, we as Daimler would like to also strike that balance. But the commitment is par excellence. And with this kind of commitment, with this kind of uh, young engineering um, talent, India definitely is a place where even Daimler can work. A quick snapshot of the six years we have. Five years passed, this is the sixth year. 2009, we set up the joint venture, built a business plan. When the recession happened, we were about 20 people who came uh, from various uh, entities of Daimler to set it up here. Out of the 20, there are only two left today. Others have moved on because the first job of setting up the uh, company is done. Um, so I am one of them and my CEO is the other. Others have moved on. Business plan was reset. In 2010, we did our first test track. Again, a commitment to a permanent establishment in, in, in India where no other automotive, I think, really has invested in a test track except maybe Tata and Jamshedpur. We have established a test track to run trucks, to make trucks test the trucks, ensure that the trucks are of high quality before they're handed over to the customer in the timeline of 2012, which is what our startup production was as per business plan. So we invested and we ran trucks 24 seven on these test tracks, which simulate the Indian roads, no matter where you go, villages, highways, city roads, these, this test track, I'll go a little more in detail later, was set up to keep the timelines and make sure that we deliver quality truck. When we say we are ready, the customer can just take it and run. Brand was envisaged and brand had a clear identity that it will be India, Indian brand. So we created for a first time in a long time in the Daimler 150 years of history, a unique brand in the Daimler portfolio and Bharat Benz was born out of it. We set up our first engine and transmission plant, and in 2012, we completed the project on time. And I'm not here to kind of just give you a pep talk. One of the things which was bothering me today was, all of you are here, I don't know how many of you are taking notes, how many of you really felt each of the speakers has added value. It's important that when we stand up on the stage, that we find something to give to you from our experience. And my experience as program manager for the last five years was to make sure that this date never slipped. We started in 2008 and we took several steps. We stumbled, we faltered, we screwed up, but the target was never to miss a timeline. And today in this room when I sit, I started my speech already 20 minutes behind schedule. I woke up in the morning at 4 o'clock, called my driver who woke up at 3.30, came to my house at 4, we started at 4.30, made sure everything clockwise comes on time so that I can board the flight and be here on time for the discussion. So the question is, why does it get late? It's a question you guys have to think. It's a question you have to wonder when all of us are seated and we're just listening to a lecture, is it me? Yes, partially. How can we correct it? As of now, I have 1 minute 57 seconds to go. And I know my clock is ticking. So you always have to that sense of timeline where you say, you might miss sometimes, but if I'm 20 minutes behind, by end of the day I catch up. And I'm sure we will catch up today too. And that is part of program management. Be aware of it. <clears throat> So the five pillars, quickly, product, we did the best products, the plant, we set up a supplier base, we set up the dealer network, and we set up with the greatest people we could afford and uh, hire into Daimler. 
I want to go into product because a lot of you are program management uh, uh, candidates. So product was very clear. We had a single focus on total cost of ownership. Customer was going to see reliability, customer was going to see fuel efficiency, and customer was going to see durability. We were not going to create a truck from Europe. We we're not going to create a truck from uh, US. It was a truck only for India. And these three things we have proven time and again to every single customer who has bought a truck from us. And who, those whom we could not prove it, we have not sold a truck to them. Timelines from project management, we have a simple uh, logic. Uh, we have a Levin gate process, a project which runs over five years, has to go through several gates, and we in Daimler have what we call the Daimler Program Management CVDS, which is a 10-grade process, which uh, maybe some of you uh, will realize that in the trucking industry in India, till about six, eight years back, such things never even existed. So this is one of our key pillars for success, that we have a very strong project management guideline, a very strong project management experience worldwide, that we establish plants all over the world, and we know how to keep timelines. We know how to plan. We know how to meticulously do what we have decided. It, at the end, comes down to sheer toil, hard work, as I mentioned earlier. Track it, measure it, take corrective actions, and of all the things you need to do in program management, when you're lost, when you don't have an analytical knowledge of what to do, the leadership has to step in and take the risk. And that risk has to come from instinct. That risk cannot be coming from analytical thoughts, because if it's analytical thoughts, anybody can decide based on, a, uh, on a, you know, option one, option two, option three. One of the key ingredients of a program success is to know when you're lost to make a gut call and live with the consequences of that gut call. Sometimes the gut calls will be right, sometimes the gut calls will be wrong. But for most part, if the management has the true sense of business, most, more often than not, you will be right. And that is another key uh, ingredient for success in program management that don't get paralyzed when you cannot decide. The leadership, the program manager, or whoever is in charge of the program has to make a call and pay the consequences. I will not bore you, uh, but essentially that is the brand, uh, gentlemen if, uh, and ladies. Whoever sees Bharat Benz should know that this comes from Daimler, but this is for India. The test track, I will skip. One of the important things which we have seen is the plant. We have gone through 36 approvals with the government. We have done everything. It took us a lot of time. We got a lot of delays. But nevertheless, we went through every single government process and achieved what we needed. We set up supply chain, which is about 80% of my truck is locally made in India. There's only 15% which it doesn't come, which is essentially the fuel injection systems which are normally imported uh, worldwide, no matter which OEM you go to. So it is possible. Dealer network is set up worldwide all the way till Jammu. And last but not the least, the financing. Uh, Mr. Ramesh Iyer was here talking about Mahindra Finance. Well, we have our own Daimler Finance. When a customer is here, one-stop shop, we do make sure that he gets a product, he gets his loan, he moves on, and can put the truck into operations from day one. And all of this would not have been possible without the right set of people. We have been very careful in selecting our employees over the time, 2,700 strong as of today, that we took some from the OEMs, some from the industry, and some from cross-border. Important thing is leadership, as I talked about, and the two important uh, people for this project success was uh, Dr. Kirkman, who is the head of Asia, and Mr. Mark Lissusea, who was the CEO who just left India and now is the COO of uh, uh, Fuso in Japan. Without this leadership, I don't think we would have made it. The people who made the calls at the right time to make sure that we were not stopping. The myths, the most important for, part for you to take away today from my little talk, sorry, I'm learning a little bit late, um, are the few myths which all MNCs have in India. And we came with the same myths, and we believed and were worried with the same concerns which most of them had, but we realized that half of them are not true. Several things which MNCs worry about. Partnership is a must. Part quality in India cannot be achieved. Prone to corruption is a, is a perception. Part could be reality, part could not be. Never on time, it's not possible. The buses run late, the trains run late, the planes run late. People are just late. 
perceptions. There are some which we can also say um, unclear taxation, political paralysis, some of them are true. But what we saw is that you, ne you don't need a partner to succeed in India. It is a myth. There's nothing so secretive, so mystical about India that without a partner you cannot do business here. You can do business here on your own, develop and work with the Indian authorities, work with the people, the great talent, and do it all on your own. So if there are any MNCs who are uh, in this audience, I guess you've got to take back to your management. Partnership is not a must. It is just, if it's working well, absolutely no problem. You should go for it. But if it's not, you can also do it. And I think this is what Daimler stands for for you. One takeaway, that partnership is not a necessity. Second, quality can be achieved in India. The supplier base in India is phenomenally good. We tell you from first, first hand, because we are sourcing 85% of our components in India. And with these components, we are able to build a quality truck which is absolutely world-class. World-class, forget India, world-class. So it is possible. The competency exists in the suppliers in India that they can deliver not only to our trucks but to the world around. Third, quality from a standards perspective can also be achieved. We have set up high-quality labs in India, and hence, when we export trucks, we don't sell like other OEMs at a cheap price. We don't associate ourselves, made in India has to be at a cheap price. We don't never let the customer look at it as made in India as the starting point of a discussion. We associate ourselves as it is, it is Daimler, it is a Benz product which comes, it doesn't matter where it comes from, and by the way, it is made in India, and the quality is great. Compliance is also something which we can do. India is a great place. I think there are hurdles all the time you go through, but compliance is something which is absolutely possible in this country. So don't ever think that when you're stopped at an airport or when you're uh, asked for something, that you really have to succumb to it. You can stay and stand your ground, you can stick by the rules, and achieve what it needs to be, and stay ethical, moral, and compliant. And Daimler is a standard example. We have not paid a single penny to anyone for any of our approvals. We have not associated with any uh, agencies to do our business. We have done it ourselves, painstakingly, walking through the doors of every little document which was needed, walking at, at each office, making sure they got what they wanted, and we were patient. We were never late. We accepted delays, but the one thing was clear for anybody who deals with Daimler, is that these guys will come and do whatever you ask them and comply with whatever you require for the environment, for the uh, industrial standards, for uh, plant and deliver, and hence can be taken for granted. The brand travels with every single act we do, and it is possible in India to go without corruption. <laughs> Last but not the least, time can also be maintained in India. After five and a half years of uh, working, I can tell you, the people here are absolutely sensitive about time. Sometimes we have a tendency to give up because a lot of things are not in our control. But please believe in yourself that you guys all can make time and delivery possible. If India can deliver on time products worldwide, it is absolutely imperative that this part of your standard belief, a core belief, that you are part of that timekeepers. You can do it. We have done it. I believe you, you all can do it. With that, I would like to end my little talk. Hopefully, that is something you can take away. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Parthasati, for the case study. And we have two questions from the online uh, questions on the app. The first question is, how much fo focus are you giving to R&D at India so that we can export not just vehicles, but also the technology, instead of depending on the other countries for this. Very interesting. Uh, the only thing which we brought from Daimler parent company was the early drawings of old trucks, which were working there as a starting point. We have modified the trucks. What we did realize was very, very interesting. The demand, the requirement of India is so unique that any Western product which is brought into this country, copy-paste, is doomed for failure. 
There's nobody who should ever do that. Indian demands are a lot more stringent. The roads are much tougher. Drivers abuse the truck a lot more because there's a lot of education which is needed. And hence, trying to copy a Daimler product and just pasting it in India would not work, will not work. Not only for us, anybody who tries to do it will not work. That's our strong belief. So if the truck has to be made, the moment we took the basic drawings, the change began about five, five years back, where our engineers sat and started to evolve the truck. The entire cab is new. The chassis has been changed. This, it has no resemblance to any of our parent company uh, products. The, and all of this has been done with our engineers who are from here, hired by us from other OEMs in India. We have maybe five, 10 experts, like in the powertrain. I think India still is not at a place when, where a, a engine can be developed from scratch. I think the competency is not quite yet there. But other than that, everything is done by Indian engineers. Hopefully that answers your question. OK, the next one is, what are the project management challenges, like delays, rework, when you are constructing the facility? Project management uh, delays. Uh, can I go through the presentation real quick? Is it something I can click? And if somebody could beam it. A classic example of project management delays. In the plant, we had 36 approvals required. And since our fundamental belief is you do it the right way, no matter how long it takes, you could read it. There was immense delays. There were authorities, there were people uh, who were trying to see uh, who are trying to test our patience. People who are trying to say, if I push them hard enough, they will buckle, and they will do how we want it to be done. We accepted delays. So the question is, how do we make it up? You don't make up delays so easily. What you do is the premonition of an anticipated delay. You have to anticipate well before it happens. The day we took a stance when we came into India that we are not going to allow corruption to happen, we already knew delays was part of the program plan. You have to plan for it. You have to plan that something which takes, if an Indian partner tells us that is about eight months of time, we assumed it's 24 months plus in our program planning. Because we don't know. And did we do 24 months plus? Lucky if we did it. If we are not uh, uh, so unlucky, then we achieved it in 24 months. So the important thing in program management is to plan meticulously as much as you know in as much as great detail as you can so that nothing is left which is common sense unplanned. The starting point cannot be that as program managers we are high level guys who just handle the issues and the guys below are working. A program manager has to know every single detail of the project but doesn't need to control every single little detail of the project. Mr. Ayer said something very interesting. Involvement becomes an interruption. I don't know how many of you heard that. That is precisely what he was talking about. A program manager, manager should know when to get involved but not to interrupt. That means a program manager should know precisely what is happening everywhere but doesn't need to guide it. It should happen because it's as per schedule. So planning is very critical. Planning of these expected delays was part of a project. Then, they had, then we had a very unexpected, uh, uh, some of the delays were also unexpected. We had critical leave, people leaving on uh, unexpectedly. Um, there was a funding delay where the money was not coming in on time from Daimler. So such unexpected timelines, sometimes you can manage, sometimes you can't. What I can tell you is this much. If you plan properly, if you persist, luck will help you catch the last 5% of your time delay. But if you bank on luck in your planning process, if you bank on high-level thinking in your execution, time can never, ever be kept. Last but not the least, why it's on time. One of the key ingredients of a program manager is you will, during a program management phase, during your program, come into several situations where you'll see just a wall in front of you, an unpenetrable wall which you be say, I cannot do anything more. It looks like I cannot do anything more. There is a term we use in Daimler called will to succeed. And it takes a lot of uh, 
experience to figure out what Daimler is trying to measure on, will to succeed. You have to have a strong will to succeed. You have to say, the wall I see in front of me can be broken. Even if you don't have solutions, you have to work at it day and night and figure out how to break that wall down. Never ever give up because you can already see the wall there. One of the key um, learnings for me was also the same. That when we ran into a problem because two projects were coming at the same time in January 2012, the medium duty platform manager, I was the medium duty platform manager and the heavy duty platform. They came at the same time because I speeded up my project and we caught up time while the other project was running on time. So we clashed. Two projects inside Daimler clashed. And when that happened, the bottleneck came because the suppliers were not anticipating so many parts to be supplied because there was a three month gap between the two projects. And the tendency was very normal. The first project, it's like a train on time, right? Keep the train on time, the other train can think about it. So everywhere as a program manager, I was always given second preference because it was just the nature of the game. The suppliers, my, my own people, the Daimler team could not handle two things running parallelly. At that point, I could have either said, I have three months of buffer, I let it slip because I can catch up, or you persist. You persist and fight for your existence. You persist for your survival. You never, ever give up. If you need to knock 10 doors, you knock 20. If you need to scream 10 times, you do it. If you need to go and talk to the suppliers, you travel. Be it Pitampur, be it, be it somewhere in Gurgaon. You got to go. And let that wall never stop you from pushing through it. It's really interesting that when you do that, Half of the times are wall, of the, these walls are illusion. They're not real problems. But you have to dare to go through that wall and say, I'm not stopping, I'm coming. The wall has to move. More often than not, the people are smart enough, resourceful enough, that when they see you pushing so hard, they join hands with you and break that wall down. Thank you, Pata Sarthi, for the answer. It was quite motivating and quite inspiring. Thank you. So I would now like to request uh, Arun to come, uh, sorry, uh, Ravi to come on the stage. To give a momento. So we, I have uh, met you in the morning and uh, you have Thank you, attending. Sangeeta. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, so you have been attending the session, so the photo may not be a surprise for you. Okay. We have the momentum. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you. So this is for you. Thank you. Thank you.